Arrays are basically uh, a content or a box that contains several values. Okay, so for example, we can put uh, we can create a variable and we can call that variable int a of type a and place inside it several things. We can put um, we can put uh, a b c d E. So basically, A would contain all these values um, into one. Okay, we'll show you how that's done. So you can have several elements within the within the box. Okay. So this example, we're going to place integers. So we start our script with always the uh, hash uh, include stdio dot h main main okay we open main we're gonna make use of some comments here so uh, to make it more human friendly reading okay an integer star okay so that's a comment there and we're just saying we're gonna create an integer array with three elements inside it now how do we do that? We say int because this is a type int. We're going to say array or a r r for short, and it's going to have three values. So we're going to have a value of three. If you actually recall, I actually did something very similar to that when I was using the char and I was inserting the words "hello world" and I made it size 15 in I think lesson two. So this is how we insert the values into the array. We have the squiggly line, um, squiggly um, curly br uh, brace, and now we put ten, put two, we put eight. Can't put more than that because only it can only hold three. If we want to hold it four, we just put four, and we just add an extra one here. In a later lesson, I'll show you how you can actually increase the size uh, automatically. So if the program runs out of space, it would automatically add an extra um, ele element space for the next element to be inserted. And that's it. So now you put the semicolon at the end. Now we're going to make another comment. Change the value of the array second element. So here we're going to try something interesting. We're going to change a value of number two. Okay. Now, how do we refer to this to there and change it? Well, very simply, we we'll just say array. We're calling that variable. And now I have to tell you that. Um, when you're re referencing arrays, it actually starts with zero. So zero would be the first one. So this will be zero, position zero, position one, position two. Okay? But there's three elements. And some people do get confused in that. However, so if we, I want to refer to number ten, that one here, I would put zero. And that would change, or it would read that one here. Okay, but this time round, I want to actually refer to number two, which is array one. So we put that and equals, and we make that into a line. So now it should be ten, nine, eight. So going backwards. Okay, put semicolon at the end. Now we're going to actually return the result, see if it actually works. So we put display. Okay, deal. So now we would display the values inside. So we're going to have three printf's printf, printf, printf. Okay, and we're going to say element zero. We're going to use percent d because we want to return whole numbers put 
put zero. I'm going to do the same here as well. Element one Danes percent D N I put array one and the last one there pressed F one by mistake. Two contains percent D two. So now we have the three arrays um, elements. Okay? And basically we just close the script off and let's just test it now. Okay? So we'll call this save as and we say array one. Save. Now let's see if it would actually run. Or oh, we get an error. Oops, we have an error. What does it say here? False error expecting that. Or a comma. Int. Okay, you see what I've made wrong? Is that part there? That's wrong. So that should have been a curly brace. Go click save, compile, and now it works. Very easy to make mistakes in programming. It's just a small typo and it can just ruin everything. So let's go to the C prompt now. And what did we call this one? called it array1 didn't we so it's up there here we go so we type array1 and it returns 10 9 and 8 we've changed the value here and that's why it actually shows us the 9 